sermon for you today, and that is shown right behind you. And I don't know, my Miss Molly, she's helping, and Miss Sophia are helping with our video today. Uh, but our one sentence sermon comes right out of scripture today. As always, sometimes I add some words or put some uh, different words in, but it always comes right out of scripture. And today, Luke chapter 1, verse 38 says this I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your will. I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your word. Sometimes, for whatever reason, I think to myself, I go back and I listen to myself and I watch myself online and that's scary. And so I tell myself, you've got to calm down. Calm down for once. So today... I wanted to sit down, at least start by sitting down, and uh, talk with you just a little bit about Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is super cool stuff. Mary, in 4 BC, she was a Jewish woman. And like all other Jewish women of the time, she was maybe hoping by some stretch of the imagination that she might be the one to give birth to the Messiah. And in Luke chapter 1, we see where the angel Gabriel, the last time that it's recorded Gabriel spoke to anyone was to Daniel, hundreds of years before. And as a matter of fact, the last time there was an audible voice, audible voice, the last time that God spoke or an angel spoke from heaven to man was over 400 years but now, Gabriel splits the sky wide open. He comes down to this young Jewish lady named Mary. And Gabriel says, Mary, you are highly favored. God has found favor with you. Mary was perplexed, the Bible says. Mary took a step back. Mary began to ponder these things that this angel was saying. Then, I'm guessing, she gave the angel a confused look. It was a look of, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what I've gotten myself into. I don't know who you are, wings everywhere, bright light shining, and this angelic being talking to me. Then the angel Gabriel repeated himself and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for God is with you. Then the conversation got thick. When Gabriel said, Mary, you are going to give birth to a child, and you would name that child Jesus. And when you give birth to him, it will be known that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and they will call him the Son of God. Because Joseph is not going to have anything to do with this child. The child that you are about to have is of divine nature. The Holy Spirit's going to come over you. You're going to have the Messiah, the Christ child, and you're going to call his name Jesus. Right now, Mary is just beside herself. The angelic being is talking to her. And she's trying to, she's trying to understand. This is where dreams come true, but yet fears seem to somehow seep in. And moms today, I don't know that if you've ever felt in your whole entire life a dream come true, yet a fear set in right at the same time. Let me tell you something. When God makes dreams come true in your life, there's no place for fear. You don't have to think fear. All you have to do is think, my God reigns. My God defeats. Death leaves. Sickness goes away. And my God wins every battle. Period. Amen. Mary is standing there looking at this angelic being. The angel keeps talking and explaining to her that this son that she's going to have is going to do great things in the name of God Almighty. Now Mary's heart becomes full. She's a smart cookie. And you know that she was favored by God. You know that she was close to God. God doesn't choose slouches. He sometimes chooses people that are not qualified just yet. And then he qualifies you. But he doesn't choose slouches. Moms, 
You're not a slouch. I remember the day my only begotten son was born. The only son I've ever had. I remember the day he was born. And I remember Krista grabbing the sides of the hospital bed with all of her might. And I remember a look that came over her face. It was the look of, I'm going to kill anybody and everybody and everything that I can possibly kill right now. And when I got a little bit closer to Kristen, I said, dear honey, sugar plum, it's going to be okay. She screamed something. I can't remember what it was. And I knew to back away. And at that moment in my life, I realized this precious soul that I'd married. For all this time, we'd been married six years. We'd dated a number of years before that. This whole time, I had no clue that at the drop of a hat, any time she wanted to, she could have beat me up and tossed me to the wind. <laughs> Mom, thank you for giving birth. <laughs> no small feet right there. Now, Mary, she's contemplating these words the angel is saying. She's thinking to herself, I wonder if this can be. This can't be. No. This is not reality. Yes, this is reality. But then Mary makes this extraordinary statement. And moms, this is the statement I want you to make to your God and your Father today. I am the Lord's servant. Amen. May it be to me today as you have said, as you have directed, as you have guided. Moms, we're in the middle of some kind of world crisis, whatever you want to call it. Some of you have been home with your children for weeks on end. It feels like forever. These little people that you've given birth to are now, what are they, two years old, one year old, 16 years old. They're running around the house like chickens with their head cut off. Won't do their homework, won't go to bed on time, won't wake up when you want them to. Eating you out of house and home. <laughs> You are still the Lord's servant. And those precious people in your life, I'm telling you, God has great plans for them yes. because of you. Amen. Amen. Maybe your children are out of the house now. Maybe, even mom, maybe you fret. Fretted, if that's a word. Maybe you are frightened because now your babies are out of the house they're experiencing this world circumstance. And you're wondering how they're handling it. Maybe you don't get to see them all the time. Maybe through social media and some other things, you're able to see them keep in contact some way, somehow. But it's not the same. And so maybe fear sets in with you. But I'm here to tell you, you are still the Lord's servant. And you are still doing good and great things, encouraging things your children, no matter the age they are. Thank you, Mom, for that. I want to go to John chapter 2. Super cool story. John chapter 2. Remember that. Etch that in your head later on. Go back and read. There was a wedding in the town of Cana, the Bible says. Now, before this wedding, some things were leading up to this wedding. This was the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Not exactly they, the very first start, but he was ramping up to this wedding, which happened then to go on record as being his first miracle performed. But 40 days prior to this, or 41 or 42, however you want to do the math, Jesus came to the Jordan River. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. In water. Then Jesus did his 40 days of fasting. And if you know the story, if you know the Bible, that's where the enemy came and tempted Jesus. And Jesus fasted. Jesus not only survived, but he thrived through that fasting of 40 days. And that's a whole other story. We can talk about that another time. But now, the 40 days are over. And Jesus comes back to Galilee. And he comes back to the region where the Jordan River flows through. And he comes right back to John the Baptist. And as he comes walking to the river, John the Baptist, in John chapter 1, 
makes this extraordinary statement when he says, there is the Lamb of God. The one who takes away the sin of the world. When John the Baptist drops the hammer with that statement, it is one of the most weightful statements in all of Scripture. And right there, for the first time, we get a declaration of who this man was that Mary gave birth to 30 years ago. The Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. Now Mary is able to begin to see her son's life. Begin to see her son's life flourish in what God Almighty intended it to be. Mom, today, if you have to wait 30 years or 60 years, whatever it may be, until your son or daughter begins to flourish or comes into their own, you hold fast, you hold tight, you do what you have to do because you are the Lord's servant. May it be to you. That's what God has designed. That's what he has directed. It can be a long life for some moms that I know. Waiting for children, waiting for husbands, waiting for people around them to get right. Mom, you can look at somebody around you and just say, get right. You have permission to do that. Get right. And of course, Jesus didn't have to get right. But now, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is watching her son come in to his own. Then the Bible says in John chapter 2, the next day, after John the Baptist makes this statement, then Jesus goes to begin now to select some disciples. He starts with a few. He starts collecting some people around him. The Bible says that Jesus chose us. He chose his disciples. They did not choose him. Then the Bible says, on the next day, now we're at John chapter 2. On the next day, Jesus and his new friends, his disciples, go to this wedding in Cana. It's a Jewish wedding. Friends of Jesus' mother, no doubt, because she had a lot to do with the wedding. She cared much about the bride and the groom and the in-laws and the outlaws. Don't tell me you don't have outlaws. She was very concerned for the family. She loved the family. In those days, a wedding feast would last days on end. We're not exactly sure, maybe three days, maybe seven days. It lasted a while. So when you were invited to a wedding, you basically took a vacation and you went to a wedding celebration for days. All put on by the bride's parents. At this wedding, when you got to the wedding, you expected to eat well, drink well, sleep well, and then eat well, drink well, and sleep well, and then eat well, drink well, and sleep well, and then eat well, drink well, and sleep well. That's all you got done doing for seven or eight days. It wasn't long into this wedding when all the wine dried up. Jesus is at the wedding, enjoying himself. He's a special guest. His disciples are there. When the wine runs out, Mary, the mother of Jesus, goes to Jesus and says, Son, the wine has run out. And Jesus says, the Bible says, he called her a woman. <laughs> that must have been appropriate, I'm sure. <laughs> It's not language that I use around the house. <laughs> he said, lady, woman, mom, what does that have to do with us? Now at that point, you can take a guess at a lot of things, but moms have that look about them that you know what you should do next. <laughs> and mom apparently looked at Jesus, looked at the wedding party, looked at the servants. She looked back at Jesus, gave him one last glance, turned around, and looked at the servants, or the servers, the waiters and waitresses, 
who were serving the wine and food. And she said to them, you do whatever he tells you to do. Mom, in your life, right now, I want you to know that you are the Lord's servant. And I want you today to begin to have faith like Mary had faith. Yes. She had faith that something big was about to happen long before the Apostle Paul wrote down the words in Hebrews chapter 11. Well, the whole faith chapter is right there in 11. But this particular chapter talk, this particular chapter in this verse, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, talks about this faith. It's something that we can't see, but we know it's there. It's confidence. It's assurance in the hope that we look forward to, knowing that what we can't see is all around us and in us and through us. And it makes big things happen. And Mary knew that Jesus could make big things happen because she had faith. Yes. Have you ever thought about what urged Jesus into his ministry was the faith of his mother. And he said, it's not my time. But moms know best. <laughs> and she said, it's time. <laughs> and Jesus He's standing in front of about six stone cisterns or buckets or cans or whatever you want to call them. And they would hold 20 to 30 gallons each of water. These, these were for the purification process of the Jewish people. These were containers for water. This water for purification was simply this. Think of it as it was something to wash your face and wash your hands. It was a physical purification for the Jewish people to participate in. For all kinds of different things. Actually, go back and read about it, research all this. Pretty cool. The super cool thing about this water that was to belong in these canisters was they had to come from a mikvah. I think it's M-I-K-V-A-H. That mikvah pool of water had to come from a live stream. It had to come from a live body of water. So when the servants would take these canisters, 20, 30 gallons a piece, to go out and get water for the purification process, they had to go to a live pool, a mikvah. They had to go to a place to where there was a natural spring. They had to go to where there was rushing water. They had to go to where somewhere there was live water, good, healthy water. That's the point. Jesus says, fill these up. So naturally, the servants fill the water up from the mikvah because that was Jewish rule. So you know they did. You know they did because the family wants to put on the very best for all their friends and family. So they're going to make sure they mind all their, their current custom P's and Q's. Jesus walks into that room. Six jugs full of water. I just imagine him looking up to God the Father. Now Jesus himself, he knows for a fact, and his mother knows for a fact. They're the only two, besides God Almighty and the Holy Spirit, that knew right then at that moment what was about to happen could not be reversed. And they knew that as soon as he performed this miracle, he would expose him as the Son of God. And at that point, the fight would be on. Jesus standing there. The water come from a mikvah, not too far from the wedding feast. But now, the living water, the light of the world, the one to whom when he fills us, rivers of living water flow out of us. Why? Because he is the living water. He touches those jugs and that water with his own bare hands. And guess what comes out of that water? It's pure, fresh, the best wine that anybody had ever tasted in their entire life. Matter of fact, so much so, Jesus said, take this wine to the head waiter, to the one who's putting on this show, and let them taste it before we give it to the guests. The head waiter takes a sip of that wine and he calls the whole show to stop and he says, most people, most in-laws, <laughs> that's so funny to say. I wonder if he said that. Most in-laws would have served the best drink first 
And when the senses are dulled, then they bring out the second best drink first. Second, sorry. In other words, they serve the best wine first, but after a while when your senses are dulled, then they give you the lesser wine last because who cares? <laughs> Let me just be candid with you. You wouldn't care. <laughs> and everybody knows it. And everybody knew it then. And that's how life was done. That's how life's still done. But that head waiter takes a sip of that. He says, this wedding feast has been going on. And I expected the best wine. I expected great wine, and it's been good. But this new wine is the best yep. ever that I have ever tasted in my life. Yep. And at that point, that head waiter had no clue that right then, those in the wedding party that knew that they had run out of wine, they knew that Jesus had performed a miracle. They knew that now they were staring at the Son of God. Mary's only begotten son or first begotten son. God's only Mary's first. Mom, have faith today. Have faith today. You're looking at that pitiful child right now that's driving you nuts. And that husband dresses like a horse and eats like a cow. <laughs> Have faith today. In God Almighty, I think it's okay today to have faith in the children you're giving birth to. Yes. I'm being a little sarcastic because it's more than okay. I want you to be excited about those people that are in your life that you've given birth to. Those closest to you. If you want to see change in their life, begin to pray and have faith. Dear God Almighty, bring, bring my loved ones into their own. Today, Mom, if it's you that needs to come into your own, I say this with all love and respect, and pray today and say, Dear God, give me the faith that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had. That today I'm going to come into my home. That next Mother's Day, when next Mother's Day comes around, I will have a crowd of people around me that call me blessed. You know, Moses' first miracle was to turn water into blood. A super cool story and a lot going on there. You know, the last plague that Moses left Egypt on was the death of all firstborns. And now comes Jesus. And his first miracle is not to turn water into blood, but turn water into sweet wine. Jesus is saying lots of things he wants to comfort you in real time. Don't miss that. Don't be so super spiritual on me today that you miss that. And he wants to take out his hand right now, stretch it out to you, and in real time you will feel something, you will see something. In real time. Because he cares about your everyday life. And then Jesus was looking at that And he knew that that wine the Last Supper was going to represent his blood. And at that first miracle of his, at the unction of his mother, he changes this water into wine also to represent and prophesy of his own death. So that you and I could live freely. So much going on there in the story. I want you to go back and I want you to read slowly through those words, John chapter 2, Luke chapter 1. That's where our stories come from today. That's where our teaching comes from today. And I want you to pick out your part. 
because I don't know what your part is or where you fit into any of those people in the story matter. But where is it that you fit in? Pull that out and allow Jesus to speak to you today. Jessica was born in Botsk, Russia in 1992. Her mother was 16 years old at the time. Her dad was 17 years old. They were not married. Jessica's mother gave her up for adoption to an American family living in Baltimore, Maryland. The American family was faith-based. They loved God. They loved Jesus. They really believed that this young lady was to be theirs. Jessica was born disabled. From her knees down, she had no bones. She did have three toes on one foot. She was adopted at 13 months old. And in the United States of America, thousands of miles from home at 18 months old, she had both of her legs amputated. She began to grow. And every time she would grow, they had to cut more bone back from her legs and put on new prosthetic legs. She says it was the most excruciating process. So growing for her wasn't something that she looked forward to. She resented God. People kept telling her at church that God has a plan. Jesus loves you. You're going to reach the world around you at least. She didn't care to hear any of that talk. One day her mom took her to a local swimming place, like a YWCA or YMCA. Jessica got in the swimming pool. She started swimming very well. It came by natural instinct to her. With just a few lessons, she was doing very well. Matter of fact, she won a city championship before too long. Swimming! At 12 years old, Jessica Long represented the United States of America in Greece in the first Paralympics she had ever entered. She was the youngest contestant ever to represent the United States in a Paralympics. At that point, she not only won a gold medal at that Olympics for swimming, but she beat the world record and the Olympic record all in the same swim meet. In 2012, at the London Games, somebody told her that they had found her biological mother, who happened to live in Siberia. Jessica thought to herself, I want to go see my mom. She wasn't sure that her mother would want to see her. She wasn't sure for why her mom gave her up. She was actually very sure that her mother gave her up because she was disabled. Because maybe she was ugly. Maybe she was less than. Maybe she was a throwaway. Jessica takes one of her adopted sisters with her to Siberia. They ride this long train ride out into the middle of nowhere in this little tiny village. Jessica says, I still remember going up to my mom and my father's little purple house. Jessica says, I still remember when my mother came down off the steps, off the porch, come walking around the sidewalk, crying her eyeballs out and embraced me without saying a word. And then after a minute, her mother said, after years and years and years and years, she said, I'm so sorry I gave you up. And Jessica could honestly look back at her life and say, I can see now it was all God. Yes. Jessica's mother could see then that it was all God. Both of those women held each other in embrace, and I gotta think, maybe Moses' mother felt the same when she gave up Moses 
She didn't know it was all God at that point. She was hoping. But it wasn't until years later she realized it was all God. Mom, in your life, maybe you've made point blank poor decisions. Maybe you've had to make decisions in real time that you wish you wouldn't have made. Whatever the case may be, I believe God is reaffirming your faith today, saying, all along I've had you in the palm of my hand. Yeah. And I'm asking you today to remember, to remember. God is saying to you, remember, you are my servant. May it be to you as I have sinned. Today God wants to strengthen you. He wants to strengthen your faith. He wants you to see him for the good, gracious God that he is. He loves you with a passion. Mom, he loves you with a passion. Your past, your regrets, your shame, in real time today, right now, your frustrations, your failures, God still got you right in the palm of his hand. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now for our moms, whoever may be listening live and may be listening to this recording. I pray that he will strengthen us all, each and every one. Allow us, Lord, the ability, the strength to recognize you for who you are. Give us faith like Mary, the mother of Jesus, had faith that we learned from Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is not what we see, but it's what we don't see. It's the hope and it's the conviction of what we know is there, which is the power of God Almighty. Yes. Amen. Help us to know what Romans is trying to tell us, that if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. Lord Jesus, for moms out there right now, I pray that you will strengthen them and allow them to feel in their heart that today they are the Lord's servant, even if they don't feel like it. Strengthen them. Lead them, guide them, give them intellect, give them wisdom, give them power from on high today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love you more than that. Jesus loves you. God loves you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. Look to them today. You don't hear that preached a lot to them. But I'm telling you, look to them. Jesus said us, God said us in the Old Testament. Look to them today. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Mom, they are your help and your strength. Where my strength comes from. You, Mom, are the Lord's servant. And I thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.